Hey, how's it going guys? Thanks for checking in on today's video. Uh, this video I'm going to give, if you're new beginners, listing on eBay, you got things you want to sell, I am going to give you five or six tips to help you create better listings. Now I know at first it could be a little overwhelming, there's a lot of fields to fill out, but just some things, even if you're filling out the fields, some tips to make it better. Because you could have the best products if you don't do your listings properly, um, it's going to hurt your sales. So I'm going to give you those tips and they will definitely help you create good habits for listing on eBay. But first, I told myself I had a busy last week that I wasn't going to go to the store this week. But um, I'm going to run out just to one store because I want to grow my inventory a little bit. So I'm going to try to go pick up a few things. So let's go do that and then when we get back, um, we'll give you that information. store I only picked up two things um first one is the San Francisco Giants zip up hoodie jacket it's got the MLB licensed apparel tag looks to be mint condition I don't think this was ever worn or washed has you know this material usually gets some fuzzies on it um it's nice and smooth has the embroidered SF for San Fran on the sleeve full zip up with a hood front pockets um, extra large I just looked these up real quick before I filmed this and um I've seen ones comparable they're going for like $40 paid $5 so that should be a nice little profit on it and the other item I picked up these women's Vionic these slip-ons you know walking sneakers I would guess um, mint condition absolutely beautiful I mean, there's zero wear on the soles. So I could list them as worn once or new without tag because there is zero, zero wear on the treads. Very nice condition. These should also, I got these also for $5. Um, again, should sell in the low 20s, maybe mid 20s. They're nice and lightweight. So I actually might be able to ship them first class. I gotta throw them on the scale and see. Let's see what these weigh. I'm real curious, cause they're nice and light. Zero it out. 15.1 ounce. So that's, you know, with a bubble envelope and a label, not even one more ounce. So I should be able to sell it, ship it 16 ounce first class mail, which will be like four change which I keep it nice and low. So I'm in all in at $9. If I sell them for say 22, so that's 13. And it's only about $11 profit. But again, I wanted to just pick up more inventory and a little profit is better than no profit. Now let's get to the reason why you're here. You need suggestions on how to create better listings. So your items sell, because that's what it's all about, selling to make money. So, I'm gonna start with number one. We'll start right at the top. Descriptive listing titles. You don't wanna be plain. They give you so many words to use. Use it up. You wanna use keywords, you wanna use descriptive words, and you wanna put as much information up there as possible. Let's say I have an outdoor, those fishing vintage shirts. Now I would put, you know, whatever brand, Let's say ABC brand, ABC men's outdoor hunting, fishing, nylon, waterproof shirt, vintage shirt. You want to put those keywords, descriptive words in there. Don't just put men's shirt or men's outdoor shirt. Let's use these shoes that I just picked up. 
these Vionic women's slip-ons. Don't just put Vionic women's sneakers. Not enough words in there. Vionic women's slip-on walking sneakers. And then if it's something is new with the tag, put NWT in caps. If they're new and you never worn them, and, but they don't have the tags, put in caps NWOT, new without tags. Put it in your title. You, know, you could put excellent condition in the title. Um, if it's electronics, you could put works great, tested in the title. So you want to use keywords. Don't just keep it real simple. Because the more words you put, that's going to help people when they're searching. You don't know what they're going to search for exactly. So use those words. All right, that was pretty simple. Now, moving on down your listing page, the next section, pictures. Pictures are very important. You don't want to put one, you know, if I have a pair of sneakers, I don't want to just put a picture like this, looking down or looking at the side. You want to put, I always like to do, you know, three quarter angle, each side, one from the top, one from the back, one from the front, show the bottom. You want to use, they give you 12 free pictures, you use them up. I've never paid for extra pictures, but I never put less than like six pictures. Even if it's something simple as like a coffee mug, you know, one side, the other side, the back side, looking down, the bottom. Just use up those pictures because supposedly now I can't speak it as factual, but the more pictures you use, it helps you in the getting into the higher rankings of the listings. It's all part of eBay's algorithm in their system. If you're listing a shirt, okay, take a picture from the front. I like to take a picture if it's a short sleeve. I'll take a picture of like the short laying flat, the short sleeve with part of the chest to show that it's, you know, that nice short sleeve. I like to take a picture of the bottom hem. Some shirts are straight hem, some are curved. Some have um, the tail where it's the shirt and the back might be longer. Show that. Show, I like to take a picture of the chest area with the collar. Take a picture of the label showing the brand and the size and the material. Um, any kind of label, if some shirts have you know, their logo embroidered on the chest, take a picture of that. If some shirts have special kind of buttons. Take a close up of the button. Maybe it's a wood button, maybe it's a pearl snap. Um, maybe it has the, the company name on the buttons. Try to get a close up of that. Flip it over, take a picture from the back. You want to get as many pictures as you can. And if you are selling, now I don't sell, but I try not to sell anything that has any kind of stains, holes, rips, tears, unless it's something really unique and vintage that people could tolerate, it's just asking for trouble. You're asking for complaints, returns. Even if you tell them in the, your description, in your pictures, people say, oh, it's got a hold. eBay's gonna side with that buyer a lot of times and you're gonna get a return. And so I stay away from that. But if you have something that has a flaw, take a close up picture of it. Maybe take a little bit of a distant picture from it. And then when you get down to your descriptions later on, that's another one of my tips I'm gonna get to, then you describe the flaw in there. You can also put it in the condition box where you check off if it's new or used. Then it's going to ask you for description of the condition. Put it in there. You want to put as much information as possible. But use those pictures. Very important. Details, details. All right. Now, what I was just speaking on, number three, details. Um, when you check off whether it's new or used, pre-owned, new without tags, new with tags, some of the options like with pre-owned, pops up a box when you click it that says condition description or whatever it is something to those lines um i always will put very nice and then i'll put like asterisk see description box for more detail so put something in there now when you get to your description box lower down in your listings put as much information as possible just like with the pictures that's your visual information now you're gonna put your written word information. Cause you can't, you know, whether you're smart enough to say, you know, by reading it or by looking at the pictures, what's going on, 
you can't judge people. So you wanna put it in there again, as much as possible. I like to copy my title and start my description box again with my title, and then I'll go from there. If it's a shirt, I'll put whatever the materials, 100% cotton, 50-50 cotton poly. You know, if it's an 80-20, like a cotton with an elastine or a spandex, I put that, because who knows what someone's allergic to some kind of material, or they don't like it because it's itchy. It's just gonna save headaches and returns. Then I like to put the measurements, okay? Well, actually, I'm not even gonna talk about that. That's gonna be later. Um, but put your information, color, write it down, because sometimes your photos don't show color. So if your pictures come out and it's actually a little darker than the true color, or it's lighter than the true color when you see it in person, you know, people are shopping online. You're not in the store where you can see it and feel it and touch it. Um, so put in there, you could put photos, color in photos, show lighter than actual or darker than actual, you know. And then if there's a flaw, now you actually, you're gonna put your flaws too. You took a picture of your flaw. I always like to make it the last or the two last pictures because then you can put asterisks and you can say, um, small stain on bottom of back, see last picture. And then they can refer to the picture to see what it is and then they can decide whether it's acceptable to them or not. Um, so details, details, details. You don't wanna hide anything because all you're gonna do is get a return and a headache. Now I have probably close to about a thousand sales and I have zero returns. Now I shouldn't even say this, knock on wood. Maybe I'm lucky, but by putting as much detailed information written and in photos, um, it has saved me. So I'm counting on that as the reason why. I only had one request for a return because they said it was too small. And then when I replied back and said, well, you know, no problem, because I don't give people a hard time. It's not worth the headache. Return it, I'll refund you your money and keep it moving. Don't get stressed out. But I told him, I said, you know, the, me the exact measurements are in the details. I said, I don't know if you missed that or not. And I never heard from him again. So, but don't hide any information. If there's a stain, there's a flaw, a tear, a rip, a hole, something's loose, there's a thread pop, a button's loose or missing, put it in there. It's going to save you returns. Number four, four. Add measurements. Now I sell pretty much all clothing, some houseware, you know, small, I have a few coffee mugs, um, vintage electronics I sell, but for the most part it's clothing. And with clothing, you know, 10 years ago when I, or whatever it was online, you know, I, I was like, who would shop for clothes online? Don't you want to see it and feel it and try it on? But they do. So you want to put extra measurements because by putting in your title, size large doesn't help anybody S clothing brands run differently so a large that fits you good in one brand might be too tight or too small in another brand it happens so what i like to do if you're selling a shirt button down men's shirt size large you know in the title i have size large but in my description bo box i always put after i put all my regular descriptions I'll put lying flat measures, dot, 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 and then I'll put top button to bottom, and I'll put it 26 inches, 25 inches, whatever it is in that range for larges. Then I'll put a armpit to armpit, and that, while my shirts are laying flat, when I'm photographing them, take those measurements. 22 inches, armpit to armpit. Sleeve inseam, even if it's a short sleeve, four or five inches, um, inseam goes from under the arm where the hem is to the end of the cuff 18 inches and I put those three measurements sometimes I'll put more um, I'm trying to think of what's a good example you know pants I lay them flat now you know the size 30 waist by 32 length that gives people the waist and the inseam but I'll also measure while it's laying flat I'll measure the ankle Eight inches across ankle because some are you know bell bottoms 
or boot cut or whatever there are, different sizes, and it gives people a comparison that at home they, they can pull out something that they know fits them right, and they can pull out their ruler, their tape measure, and measure, and they know, oh, it's real close, or it's the same, or it's too big or too small. So those extra measurements are going to save you again returns. That's what you. That's the key. You don't want returns. It's going to cost. It's going to open in cases and meshes things. Stay away from it. So give those measurements. Even if it's something I have coffee mugs online, um, four inches high, three and a half inch opening diameter, holds. 12 ounces. I, I took out a measuring cup and measured how much the mugs held. So give people the information they really need and you'll have successful sales. Number five, don't be greedy. When you're listing and you now, that's something that's going to take time to learn. How do I price something? It's used. I have these sneakers. Yes, they're not brand new with a tag. They're not in the box. But by looking at them, the soles show zero wear, mint condition. How do I price it? So, you know, you go into your eBay, type in the title. You know, you can always look at the tag and the shoes inside. It's going to tell you the brand, Heritage, Bionic Heritage. Look them up, find the exact ones. Now you go into your, see what they're listing for. Now, listing, people can ask anything, doesn't mean anything. Don't base what your list, other listings are, but it's gonna give you an idea of what your competition is, okay? Once you see that price range, okay, same sneakers are, are listed for um, $25 with free shipping or $24, you know, $24 with $5 shipping. Gives you an idea and you, you look at your comparisons. You get a range. Now you go in your filter and you look, you, you click off sold items. Now you get to get your prices in green and that's what they sold for. Now you can see where the items that sold, that's what's really gonna matter. So you know your competition, you know where you wanna be. Um, if you can afford to stay in the low end of that, you know, if you have a lot of profit margin, do it. You don't wanna be on the high end unless it's something brand new or whatever be the case. So now look at your, your sold listing prices and it's you're going to know where you should be at if you know the askings that are current are $30 plus $5 shipping $35 plus $5 shipping $32 plus $5 shipping and they're just sitting there listed but you look at your solds and you know the most recent solds are $22 plus $5 shipping $24 plus $5 shipping you know everything that's current is listed five to ten dollars too high and if you can afford to do it, come in at that $20, $25 range. Okay? So don't be greedy. Do your proper research on pricing. Check your current listings. Get an idea of what the competition is. Check the sold listings. See what everything is sold for. Find your sweet spot. I try to deal with a little... I'd rather lose. Well, not lose. You're still making profit. But I start, I'd rather be on the low end and make a quick 12 bucks then be on the high end and make a slow $20. You know what I mean? That time is not worth the extra couple bucks. So price it right. All right, that was my five tips to create better listings to help you make sales. Now, I always add in one extra bonus. The bonus one is if you're selling clothing, um, I pretty much always used fixed price, no auctions. If you do an auction on clothing, um, unless you, it's a really high, hot, popular, something that just came out, or like, you know, vintage Jordans or the high-end sneakers, whatever they are, that people are buying up, the auction is not going to work. Now, I've done it in the past. I, I've sold, I've had a few pairs of sneakers that I've sold for anywhere from four to $600 because they were like camouflaged, no, I don't even remember what they were camouflage Jordans or whatever. They were sold for like 500 and something. Um, I did those on auction because I saw they were selling, they were a hot collector thing. But something like, like I'm just using these examples because I got them sitting on my lap. Something like this on auction, you know, if you price it 
at what you want, might as well price it at fixed because it's the same thing. You're not going to get a bidding war on sneakers like this. Okay? If you price them starting your auction at, you know, $10 just to, for the heck of it, thinking it's going to go up, someone's going to end up buying them for $10 and you're going to lose. Okay? If you start them, if, you, if the going price for these is $25, so you, that's what you want, and you start your auction at $25, well, you might as well just do fixed because it, it, you're not going to sell them that way. So stay away from auction on clothing. Unless it's a hot item that's the new rage or the, the, the most viral thing lately that you get your hands on, auction does not work. All right? That is it. I hope these tips help you. Um, it's just a learning process. I've been doing this for about four or five years, and I'm still learning all the time. Still learning brands. Still learning little tricks from watching other videos of more experienced sellers. Even some are newer, you know, some people learn things. So always watch videos, keep learning, pay attention to your listings, see what's working and what's not. If you listed something for $25 and $5 shipping and it's sitting stale, you know, but if you have, you know, 20 of that is profit, you know, maybe throw in free shipping and so you lose $5, but maybe your item will sell right away. So you're gonna generate that cash flow quicker than letting something sit long tail and not sell for a few more dollars. So that's it guys. Um, good luck with your sales. Thanks for watching. Please check out my other videos. Like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you later. Bye.